As I mentioned at the top of the show, residents in the country's biggest city have been told to ration their electricity now, right now. This is supposed to be happening this evening over concerns about power supplies. Here's how Seven and Nine reported the news in tonight's bulletins. Tonight, we're being asked to limit our power use with energy supplies already strained. Soaring temperatures are putting our electricity grid under pressure, with families being urged to limit power usage. There are also major problems on our train network. A shortage bringing trains to a standstill between Blacktown and Richmond this afternoon. Don't let these politicians blame it on soaring temperatures. It's one hot day in summer. What do they expect? They can't handle one hot day and supply us with electricity. A single warm day in the high 30s, not a five-day heat wave in the 40s, and everyone's told to switch off their appliances. The Nationals MP and former Resources Minister Keith Pitt joins me from Bundaberg. Keith, this is the sort of thing you and I have been warning about and warning about repeatedly for month after month, for year after year, in fact, and now we're, we're dealing with it and they seem like rabbits in the spotlight. They don't know what to do. Well, what an absolute farce. Uh, and I'll tell you what they do. It's this thing called demand management, Chris. And that's code for turn off consumers. And they'll start with big industry and then they'll work their way back to consumers, air conditioners, dishwashers, all the things that people actually like to have. You know, we're, we're not in Africa. Uh, th this is just outrageous. I'm just waiting until we get the uh, reserve notice, the lack of reserve notice that says the sun is going down. And that's why you've got a shortage. Uh, this is the absurdity, right? The absurdity is people get air conditioners in this climate because you need them when it's hot, but they're saying they've so stuffed up our electricity grid that's, that when it's hot, you can't use your air conditioner. Well, it's not only that. Uh, the price will be climbing. It's escalating exponentially. Uh, it'll hit the cap, $16,000 plus a megawatt hour. Uh, that, you know, that is almost guaranteed. It means you'll be paying even more for the power that you actually need uh, and what happens when you start to black out big segments of the, of the state or the country? Well, that's bad for our reputation. It's bad for the people that live here. And it's completely unnecessary. Now, I went and checked, and we're still 70% powered by black coal, brown coal, gas and traditional hydro. That, that's what generally runs big states like Queensland in particular. But the idea that you can rely on something that's intermittent, well, you will get outages because it's not sunny. And you'll get outages because there's no wind. Uh, and people, I just don't understand why they can't make the connection. These things, they just don't work. They won't work all the time. I'm looking at the numbers here. I like to have the National Electricity Market app on my phone and check this out. And, yeah, uh, during the daylight hours in New South Wales or in the NEM, stacks of solar power, so that was trundling along. As soon as the sun starts to go down, they have to ramp up the gas to make up, to add to the coal, because there's bugger all wind. And that's what it's all about. It's all about not having a, anything reliable from the renewables, and they don't have enough coal left in the system, so they have to ramp up gas. I can probably get the price while I'm looking at that but this is the point too as you make uh, uh, the, the the price the price peaks here will be outrageous well go and talk to any dry land farmer particularly those ones in western new south wales who get one crop every three years because that's how it works if this entire country relies on the weather for its economic prosperity well we are all in trouble and this is exactly where chris bowen wants to go that's why he's over in saudi arabia right now yeah, it is tragic and it's just going to keep getting worse until they, they sort out some, some reliable, dispatchable power. Now, uh, I need to get your thoughts on something else. And this is the, the, the proposition that Australia should join in with the naval patrols uh, uh, in the Middle East to try and protect uh, commercial shipping there. It's a very similar role to what uh, Australia performed right throughout a couple of decades there during the uh, uh, Iraqi situation, the Iraq wars, but both before, during and after. Do you think Australia should accede to this request? Well, it's obviously a decision for the government, uh, but it is more than 10% of world shipping that's coming through the canal and into the Red Sea. It, it's critical. And if our biggest partner, our biggest alliance partner, our security partner is asking for our support, well, then my view is it should be provided. Uh, the, uh, Australian warships are fighting warships and Australia's Navy and Australia's defence personnel are there to defend this nation and its interests. And if it is in our interest uh, to provide that support, well, it should be provided. But, Chris, I, I was really surprised this was on the front page of the Oz. I mean, is the Albanese government doing a Dan Andrews? Do they want to get a feeling for what the, pope, the public and people think uh, before they make a decision? 
Uh, these are critical and important decisions. Uh, it is a conflict zone and we should be out there with our allies because guess what? There are our imports and our exports as well that need to be defended. That's a very interesting point. You're suggesting they've leaked it out there to uh, test the waters or would the US have leaked it to try and put pressure on Albanese? Well, it's a really strange situation. These things are usually held very closely for obvious reasons. Uh, I'm advised we already have defence personnel uh, in the region. I think, you know, if that's relatively well known. Uh, but these are key decisions. Uh, we've already seen them walk away from Israel and the US position uh, in recent days. Yeah. Uh, I think this will be a, a critical decision for the Albanese government. Yeah, well, there's one on Albo's desk when he gets back from leave. Thanks for joining us, Keith. I appreciate it. Keith Pitt there, live from Bundaberg.